Subin Ganesh Takuri is another important climber in present Nepal. Listen to his almost unbelievable journey from a small school in a village outside the city to the summits of the 8000 meter mountains and into the pages of the world edition of National Geographic. As a contrast, I'll add that he himself doesn't know particularly how old he is. He is essentially self-taught in English and is now also the co-founder of the legendary Czech pub in Kathmandu. You will meet him if you will go on an expedition with Czech climber Honza Trhava. The day's dose of inspiration starts now, because if this can be done from a village somewhere in Nepal, then anything is possible anywhere in the world. So then I already know the beginning of your story that you were born in a village not so far away from Kathmandu, that you do not know exactly your age, uh, which is very interesting for me. And please can you tell me just shortly your story from this village to uh, mountaineering and tourism business? Uh, okay. Uh, I come from uh, north of Kathmandu, so which is not far from here. When I finished my school in the village, uh, like till grade 10, the, uh, at that time I was age of 15. Then also uh, there is a little interesting things because during that time there was like a Maoist in, insurgency. Mm -hmm. So I was targeted uh, in the village to join with them. So that is one reason I, right after I finished my schools then I, I, I moved to Kathmandu and uh, I think in the beginning when I moved to Kathmandu uh, at that time I didn't have any uh, people to support or like any connection so basically I spent a uh, few uh, months uh, uh, slums life here uh -huh. and then uh, you know uh, then I worked in a like handmade carpet factory uh, for a few months then when I was 16 I came to Tamil to work one of the trekking company as a, you know, you know, like cleaner or like, you know, you know, helping to make the tea and things like that. And same year, I started working as a porter. So mm -hmm. uh, when I was 16, and then uh, you know, next uh, uh, three years, I continued worked as a porter. Then when I uh, learned little English and I knew uh, all the trekking routes, then. I did uh, some training, then I started working as a guide computer and then, you know, trekking guide. And same time, I started climbing a little bit the mountain. So took uh, some, uh, uh, you know, climbing training, then also I started doing a little bit climbing. So that is how, you know, I, I move uh, all my different, you know, uh, you know positions in my uh, mm -hmm. trekking field. Yeah. Was it difficult? Yeah, definitely. Obviously, you know, like let's say if we talk now, so it's uh, let's say 20 years back, uh, 18 to 20 years back, and at that time, obviously, it was uh, very different than today, because when I used to work as a porter in the mountain, that time uh, we didn't have any insurance, we didn't have any proper uh, equipment, so uh, I used to go um, in some uh, peak climbing or expedition or high passes. With uh, without uh, proper clothes or uh, without insurance, so you know uh, uh, it was not that easy. But uh, you know, same time when I had uh, uh, you know motivation, I, I I enjoyed my work. I enjoy I, I uh, you know I enjoyed a lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, have you saw people dying? Yeah, definitely because you know uh, uh, quite often. Uh, let's say like uh, once uh, we were doing quite long pass over the Tashi Lapsha. And at that time, I think uh, we were quite a big uh, group of uh, number of porters. And then, uh, you know, when we, we used to work as a porter at that time, we didn't have any like proper tents or things like that. We used to sleep like maybe 10 or 15 porters in like kitchen tents in the corner. And because, you know, as long as we are more people in the same tents, then we are more restricted than it's, it, it is warmer. So, you know, one of our, you know, colleague in the morning, we, we found he's dead. So, you know, you know, it was quite sad. Uh, but in that, that moment, uh, maybe once I thought maybe, you know, I would, uh, I would like to find some other work, not continue work as a porter because, you know, one thing we enjoyed, I really wanted to do something different. But same time, you know, it's, uh, you are putting your life in risk. So yeah, definitely. Uh, there were like I saw a few friends or few people uh, who were working as a porter died. Uh, yeah, I see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Is it difficult to learn English? Is it too different from Nepali language? Yeah, definitely it's very difficult. Uh, let's say, uh, I think uh, for me, uh, you know, I studied till grade 10 in the village. Uh, obviously, it's a government school and uh, I learn, we learned some alphabet and basic things in the village. But when I came to Kathmandu and I started working in, a, uh, in, the, in this field as a porter, uh, that, uh, that time I couldn't say properly like my name is Subin or things like that, you know. So it took quite a long time because I was motivated. I, I tried to learn, listen how people speak and I tried to, you know, uh, you know, focus myself uh, to learn, you know, self-learning. So, uh, you know, yeah, it, it, it took quite a long time, but uh, I, I never took any, any classes or anything uh -huh. to improve my English. Uh, you know, so that is how I learn. Still, it's not perfect, but it's 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 I can work. Uh, yeah, very you know. great. <laughs> and you, now you are deeply involved in the mountaineering. I saw your photo in National Geographic. Mm -hmm. you, you are just important man in the mountaineering. Ah, uh, well, yes. Uh, you know, like I I like climbing, and uh, uh, you know I love the mountain. So uh, you know, uh, it has been uh, from my very young age. I have uh, given all my time and dedication and everything in the mountain so yeah I love it and I'm enjoying it so I'm more focused and in future I will continue what I'm doing with my team and with my friends so yeah we'll wait for the plane to okay. move a little bit <laughs> all right uh, what are your most important goals you did uh, in mountaineering the most important hills summits expeditions uh, uh, I did Everest uh, you know, it was quite most important, and in the meantime, I also climbed uh, quite many peaks. So yeah, the, yeah, Everest was you know quite important. So this is number one for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the others mention some other other peaks uh, you like you enjoyed. Yeah. Uh, I actually you know I didn't reach to the summit in Amadabnam, but uh, you know I liked uh, very much the climbing over there because uh, you know I went with uh, Traba and uh, you know Miri. Uh, when we went together uh, to Amadablam, uh, when I see the place and uh, the uh, the mountain, it's it's uh, I think for me it's one of the most beautiful mountain, and and I think it's same when we do climb, you know, it it has a mix, climbing like technical uh, climbing and you know rock climbing and even ice climbing, so it's really mixed. So I love this mountain. Yeah. Yeah. If you see the changes of the mountaineering now and of the just tourism industry, and what do you think? Uh, how is going to be the future? I think uh, obviously, you know, as we always uh, see uh, the uh, the mountaineers or the climbers who climb in, you know, many years back and now, uh, things are changing so much because I think. Uh, for me, that is what uh, I always ask uh, questions myself because in the past, uh, you know, the climbers they used to do more like traditional climbing. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. You know, basically that is what you know. Last time when uh, the Messner was here, I was you know talking. We were discussing about these things because he mentioned about like traditional climbing. Yeah. So I asked the name like you know what what do you mean the traditional climbing and uh, it was a quite interesting point uh, which I had a very similar uh, you know uh, idea because I would I would like to keep uh, the climbing things as it was before because let's say for example like you know uh, for me going to the mountain and climbing is so beautiful that uh, at least like you walk few days to reach to the base camp and then after that you, you start slowly climbing and acclimatize and you know uh, this is the way you know and nowadays things has things has changed so much because i think it's a, it's a uh, the first thing is too much commercial because uh, and there is too much competition mm -hmm. that uh, to put the records uh, so that you know i think uh, uh, you you know it because you know some people you know just take a helicopter to the base camp uh, you know which they skip like many days trek beautiful trek and then even like try to bring all their belongings by helicopter to camp one camp two uh, and then just you know try to summit quick and then move by helicopter to the next uh, base camp and then just summit and you know obviously it's a good it really brings a different type of climbing but I would say that you know I think traditional climbing is uh, so beautiful that uh, it's not a competi it's not a competition but uh, you how you you enjoy you know
like you know you walk a few days to the base camp take your time and enjoy the mountain and also i think for me like it it really helps a lot for the environmental issue because you know imagine that uh, like when every day like 10 helicopters goes to the camp two or camp one you know like uh, like you know it's so many much. helicopters and then uh, environmentally it's not good yeah and then i think you know if it continues same way next 10 years i think this will impact uh, it two three times faster uh, than it is impacting already uh, by the global warming i think i think uh, you know so it's so different uh, in the past and now so things has been changed so much yeah uh, can you recognize any strong influence from people from other countries? I don't know, from China, India, United States, somebody from Europe. Is there recognizable some influential? Uh, you mean the uh, in the climbing? Yeah, but in the industry, maybe some investments, building hotels, or if any country is just profiling itself here. Uh, well, I think in the big cities, like you can see in Kathmandu, you know, like you you can already see a few, you know, five-star hotels under construction. So I think uh, many international chain hotels are coming into the business and they are investing very much. Mm -hmm. I think I'm pretty sure they have seen the you know the future or you know per, per, you know some uh, possibilities so that is why they are investing but still i think in the you know mountain region there is not any you know international investment i have seen so ma those people who own the hotels or lodges or tea houses you know most of these people are from the local area so only okay. in the big cities there are international investors but not in the mountain region yet yeah in the mountains, the Sherpas are the kings. What's that? In the mountains, the Sherpas are the kings. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they are the kings. And, and it should be, because I think uh, that is what uh, I was always thinking, because let's say, uh, you know, we have the best, uh, you know, mountain in the world, and uh, we have the most beautiful mountain, you know, terrains. And uh, so, you know, there are huge possibilities uh, that, uh, uh, the, uh, for the tourism in industry and then uh, when I see these things then I think uh, if uh, uh, we open for international investor I think there will be like so many people who, who would be interested you know investing a lot of money in that area uh, but I think uh, I'm sure that this will bring uh, like not very good messages to the people and all for the environment so uh, yeah all the you know local peoples or Sherpas or the peoples who are living in the mountain they are the king over there and I think which is really cool. and that's good yeah, that's right yeah, yeah thank you very much yeah thank, thank you so much thank, thank you. you thank you thank you Namaste. Namaste. thank you thank you for listening and see you next time, Peter.